Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Welcome into the podcast, folks. It's time for another story. I'm Steve Gilley, along with my fellow podcaster, Rod Mullins, and today we have a tale of war, Appalachian patriotism, and just plain forgetfulness. It's the story of the independent state of Dade. Say what? What did you just say? Did you forget? I must have. Did you say the independent state of what? Of Dade. Well, I got to hear this. You got to tell me this one because I've never heard this one before. Well, Rod, you might ask what in the heck is a Dade, right? I was going to say, I thought you first said date. Is that like a nut or something? No, Dade. D-A-D-E. Oh, now I know we're talking about some place. It's like a county or something. Are we talking about a county like in Georgia or Florida or someplace? We are talking about Dade County, Georgia, a small county located in the extreme northwest corner of the state with Tennessee on the north and Alabama on the west. Dade County is located in the Appalachian Mountains and as such, obviously, is home to some breathtaking and rugged scenery. Mm. Founded in 1837 and named for Major Francis Langhorn Dade. I love that name. I do too. I like that. Major Dade was killed in the Dade Massacre by the Seminole Indians just two years earlier. The citizens of Dade County have always been independent and self-reliant, much like most other Appalachians. But the county was formed from the land that was taken from the Cherokee after they were forced to relocate west to Oklahoma in the Trail of Tears. That rugged scenery I spoke about a few seconds ago, Mm -hmm. that includes an 1,800-foot deep canyon called Cloudling Canyon, which is important because it cuts off Dade County from the rest of Georgia so completely that up until 1939, the only way into or out of the place was through Alabama or Tennessee. This isolation fed resentment, and the resentment came to a boil during the Civil War. At the beginning of the war, the county decided that the state of Georgia wasn't moving fast enough in seceding from the Union, and by golly, Dade County just wasn't going to wait around for the folks in the state capital of Milledgeville to get a move on. Dade County, Georgia, General Assembly Representative Bob Tatum made a barn burner of a speech on the floor of the state capital in which he stated, By the gods, gentlemen, if Georgia does not vote to secede immediately from the Union, Dade County will secede from the state and become the independent state of Dade. Now, Bob Tatum, known locally as, get this, Uncle Bob, headed back to Dade County to the village of Trenton and called a public meeting at the courthouse square in which the citizens of Dade voted to secede from both Georgia and the United States of America. Tatum sent secession proclamations to Washington and to Milledgeville, but got no response from either government. Well, the reason for leaving Georgia was explained in this more colorful, if not a bit condescending passage that appeared in a local paper. Dade County, sick and tired of Georgia shillying and shallying at the beginning of the Civil War, seceded individually from the Union in 1860, declaring its independence not only from the U.S., but from a state that couldn't make up its mind. Thus, the feisty little county was a sovereign nation, the independent state of Dade. Shillian and Shallian. I'm going to have to use those words now. Now, when I read that, spell tard for me as the paper spelled it. Tard. Spell it for me. T-A-R-D. That's right. Not T-I-R-E-D. T-A-R-D. Tard. Well, I figured that much. Yes. (laughs) That's why I said it was condescending. That's right. Anyway, now nobody recognizes this secession, not Georgia, not the Confederacy, and not the Union. But things were so busy at this time that, frankly, nobody had the time nor the resources to waste on forcing the county to toe the line. Dade County, or as it was now known, the independent state of Dade, was so isolated that the Union didn't bother to force it back into the Union at the end of the Civil War. Dade County had declared its independence from Georgia, so Georgia's return to the U.S. didn't include it, and the Union never got around to bringing it back into the fold, so the independent state of Dade just existed. Well, county residents didn't forget it either. They continued to claim sovereignty for the next 85 years, but then 
1941, Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese. The United States went to war in the Pacific and in Europe against Nazi Germany. Patriotism spread like wildfire throughout the country, and Dade wasn't immune to its effects. At the end of World War II, with a banned plane and 4,000 Dade residents present waving flags in front of the county courthouse, those present very loudly voted unanimously in favor of rejoining the United States, all carried on national radio, and followed by the reading of a telegram from President Harry S. Truman welcoming the independent state of Dade back into the fold. Truman's message ended with, Welcome home, pilgrims, and all was good until... July 19th, 1999. That was the day that the Georgia Quarter was released by the Federal Mint, and the fine citizens of Dade County noticed something just a bit odd. You see, the map of Georgia portrayed on that quarter left out Dade County. Georgia leaders denied any intent on their part to exclude Dade County, and so did officials at the U.S. Mint, claiming it was all an accident. But not everyone in Dade County accepted that explanation, preferring to believe that the state intentionally left it off the official Georgia quarter. Now, Rod, historians have disputed this story we've just told, saying that the county's two representatives actually voted against secession at the Georgia Secession Convention. Respected Georgia historian E. Merton Coulter concluded that the county did not secede from Georgia at the beginning of the war, According to Coulter, Dade County men wholeheartedly joined the Confederate Army and served their new nation well. Some 40,000 troops passed through the county during the war, and Dade County men saw action at the First and Second Battles of Manassas, Fredericksburg, Cold Harbor, Gettysburg, and in many other battles. Uncle Bob Tatum? Well, he remained in the Georgia Assembly through 1863 when he retired to attend to his health and to his family, including his sons who were fighting for the South. You know, that's an interesting story, whichever one it is. You know, whether the actual historical version is by that historian or the actual folklore behind all this, an interesting story nonetheless. Yes, it is. And uh, two sides to every story with it. And, of course, the people of Dade County will believe it one way. They were independent there for a while. And then others will believe, nah, it didn't happen that way. It still was the way it always was. They just didn't pay attention to it, or they forgot about it. And that's the story of the independent state of Dade, another story that makes up the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We also have an online radio station, Stories Radio, that plays all our podcasts as well as other material unavailable anywhere else. Simply go to the TuneIn app and search for Stories Radio, then add us to your favorites. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia, and we're on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Again, thanks for listening. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody. <laughs>